Welcome back guys, and uh, today we are here with another deck, and this deck is Selesnia Agro slash, you know, all the human junk. But uh, apologies if I'm not very enthusiastic during this. I actually already recorded this video and got three w matches, three wins. They were all really, really good matches. One was absolute god draw on my half. I'll tell you about that when we're searching for a match. Uh, number two was a really, really close game, came down the last turn. My opponent misplayed and that actually managed to allow me to get back into where they offered they blocked with Olivia which is when they didn't need to which allowed me to uh, get rid of it where it would have just straight up beat me and then game three I kept accidentally kept a bad hand <laughs> and uh, the game just was smiling on me that day and I just drew out of it and managed to win and then I realized I've got to turn my mic on <laughs> so uh, I've, I've got the I've got the file it's, it's just sitting there of like the, the perfect gameplay just no no commentary <laughs> So yeah, let's just talk about this deck. I'm not really going to spend too long on the white part because it's just the cards you run. There's there's not really any debate. In the in the humans deck anyway. I don't think anyone would disagree. And uh, the green is where the spice comes in. You saw in the Boris video where I went for like double strike, trample, a bunch of home spells, etc, etc. But on this deck it's more focused on uh, getting a white board and then just team buffing yourself. And uh, I mean, if you count all the ways we can do it, Sunblade Elf's ability, Thaya's Lieutenant, Consul's Lieutenant, uh, what else we got? Uh, always watching Mecha Stands, Nissa, Gideon. There's lots of ways, <laughs> is what I'm getting at. For green, I mean, Sunblade Elf isn't a human, which is sad, but I mean, 2 2 for 1 mana with a really, really relevant ability is pretty strong. Uh, Sylvan Advocate, I mean, all my green early drops are just straight value. Uh, Again, not human, not human, but he is an ally, which is re relevant. Just watch recruiter again. He is a human, but the ability is just not so good. That's worth, it's worth it. Baron War Leader is the I don't know, like the premium card. It's so it's most likely going to be like a three three or four four, which is decent for three mana. And then because we do have allies in our deck and cards like always watching, which give them vigilance, we can attack and then give the, give uh, this creature like first strike and trample, which is pretty strong. Card and test now it was Uvenwald Mysteries. I've been very impressed with it. It absolutely destroyed me single-handedly off camera. I was playing a Golgari value deck and it couldn't keep up with this one card. <laughs> so I thought it was worth a test and it's it's been going strong. And uh, of course we won West, Westvale Abbeys because why wouldn't you in two colour aggro deck and yeah so without further ado let's let's jump into some games. And uh, speaking of this god draw, let's, uh, <laughs> let's see if anyone can top this. I went turn 1, Sunblade Elf. Turn 2, Plains, Kithian, second Sunblade Elf. <laughs> turn 3, Attack, flip, flip Kithian, get a Gideon, and then I play, I think, a Constant Lieutenant and another 1 drop. And then they were dead the turn after, so... <laughs> it was delightful, to say the least, and yeah. Let's hope we can repeat some of that. I wouldn't mind three matches of that because a nice 10 minute video <laughs> would satisfy everyone. But M I K Y is our opponent, and he is on the play, which is sad. A two lander, which we can't cast with much in our hand, so no. This hand is worse, but it's at the same time slightly better. So I think it's worth a keep. Uh, can't play a one drop in time, but. We can rip a second white source or another land, Bygone Bishop might be able to take us out of it. And uh, yeah, so I mean we are very much a two colored deck so it wouldn't be unusual. One of our only three drops. <laughs> yeah, so 23 lands and what's that, 53 cards, so just less than half 50-50 chance and we weren't on the play so we have three turns to do it. So it's, it's not unreasonable. For us to hit a land here. Who knows, maybe he even misses a play and we can just ramp it out with this watch of career. Although that's not looking likely. Maybe I should run Sylvan Rangers. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind one here. It's just, I'm feeling after all the bad luck I'm having today after the recording died that I just know I'm not going to rip this land. And uh, suspicions have been confirmed. I mean, worst case scenario here, we got Dust Watch into Hand Me a Militia Captain into Thalia's left hand. And then hopefully, <laughs> hopefully some good can come out of this. 
but come on please <laughs> for the love of god just don't play a spell i'll be the happiest guy in the world got the land Ooh, we actually might not actually no mighty can oh come on okay yes we are on come on rip a land as well that would be perfect Ugh, never lucky okay so we actually only have one white source so never mind so we just play out you i guess If we if we had a second white there, that was a really actually strong turn. Let's go play. Our opponent is on Jund, so he's most likely going to be running Languish, Radiant Flames, etc. And we are stuck on two lands, so things do not look peachy. I would love to actually get Uvenwald Mysteries out because you know it's insurance against a board wipe. Although by playing out the uh, Tyler's tracker makes me think he might not actually have a plan here. I mean, he might not actually have the language in hand. This is the turn we need to rip around if we want to be in the game, and we did, and it's a white source. Okay. The question is, do we want to test game with the, the Howler? I think we actually do, but we want to play our, all our spells out first. So, get our second white. We could just Uvenwald Mysteries, and then if he wants to block and trade, we'll get a clear out the deal. I'm not really too keen on that play though. Or we could just play out Han We a Militia Captain. And then a left tenant. Or oh, the left tenant gets no value now because it, the dust watch flipped. Hmm. I quite like trying to get a flipped Han We a Militia Captain in this matchup. Which we can actually do this turn, so. I think I'm gonna go like this and then attack with the howler just because if he does if he, I'm happy taking that trade. Trading a trading a two drop with his three drop I'm pretty okay with. It's already got me a lot of value getting some cheaper spells. With one red he can't crack a clue, so yeah, I'll take that trade. I shouldn't have done that actually because now my can we militia captain doesn't flip. Do you want really to realize something just after you've attacked? Okay, I'm an idiot. I deserve to lose this game now, but uh, hey, Owl and Colossus, we have two two answers for that in our deck. I guess we just try and beat down in the. Well, actually, if we draw a green sword, we can just Nissa and jump all day. Alas, uh, stuck on three lands still. Could just Uvenwald Mysteries as well, and then that would allow us to generate clues. But I don't think we really, we've already got two clues, so. I think I might just go Expedition Envoy into Thaya's Lieutenant, and then just hope he doesn't have the board wipe, and then we can jump, and then hope we can just attack in on the way back or something. It's not looking too promising, but. Like if he has like Shand Resignation or a Border IP we just lose, but we're not because we're kind of choked on mana we can't really afford to play around it. Unfortunately we I mean maybe this guy's bad and he doesn't realise that we can't like double block. <laughs> I do forget that all the time without Link Colossus, you can't block. So, moment of truth, if you shine his ignition, this will just move on to game 2 and pretend it never happened. Uh, and to be honest, even if he does just do that, then we know the Henry Militia Captain was never getting us out of the deal. Instead, it's a Oran Reef Hydra, so maybe we still don't stand a chance here. He doesn't even attack. Okay. This thing flips now, it's going to be huge. Make a stand is. Absolutely. It doesn't do anything for us though, does it? We attack all out, he most likely just chumps. But our team survives and then he'll hit us back for like 11, 13 or so on the swing back. But I think it's a play, I think it's actually still the play. And then we just, yeah, I think we've got to go for it. Uh, hope we draw like a Niss or something. And hope he tries to trade here, I think that's probably the best bet.
the longer we sit around, the more, more likely he is to draw onto a board wipe or his late game's going to be stronger than ours. And he does go for the trade, thank Christ. So. Unfortunately, there's no, yeah, there's no way to kill that Hydra this turn, but. Okay, yeah, so we get to wipe two of his creatures here. Keep our entire board and get in for a lot of damage. So. And we'll actually make a 1 1 end step. <laughs> I guess that comes into play. Okay, I'm over the moon here. Don't, don't top deck the board wipe on us. That's all I'm asking. The left turn gets bigger. Okay, come on. You didn't have it last turn, I don't think. Don't have it this turn. He could sack the clue and dig for it. He doesn't have double black yet. So if he does have the language, he can't play it. Oh, this is this is rough. He's cracked the clue. He's digging for it. Don't, don't do it. Don't you dare do it. Don't don't you drop that second black which you just top decked into a languish. Or a chan resignation. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll take that. <laughs> that was a bad draw. That kind of worked out. Uh, I don't think our opponent needed to make them blocks, especially. Well, actually, I'm not sure. I can't really come. I played shit that game as well, so. <laughs> uh, that was an interesting one. I'm not really sure if I did anything right that game. Like, I don't feel like I did anything right. I just feel like our opponent kind of didn't draw right either. Had we made a captain showing it's worth there, it managed to kill a. It would I mean, worst case scenario, it would have traded with a 5 drop there, which is a uh, pretty good value. Hopefully we can be on the. We were off the play that game as well with a bad draw. I'm really surprised we managed to turn that one round. Let's see if we can dig this one through. Fallander with always watching Giddy. I mean, you have to keep this. It'd be rude not to. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, we're going to have an, have zero value from our Knight of the White Orchid. But hey, life. Uh, I mean, I'd love to rip a. Another two drop slash one drop over it, which I would absolutely play just because I love getting value from night. But, uh, who knows? I mean, we've got two drop, three drop, four drop. Obviously, if we'd had a one drop here, this would be like an amazing key. And it's, not, it's, it's interesting, I wouldn't say these are like the premium cards we would have wanted, but I guess we can't complain too, too much. Uh, Almost time to play the veteran war leader before the always watching. This guy isn't an ally, is he? No, he's not. He's just a knight. Opponents on black, which instantly I'll just say languish. Okay. It's actually a decision here which one we're going to lead with. I like having a declaration. Hmm. Grasp of Darkness. So, I mean, veteran war leader is a 1 1. Obviously, we play out the veteran war leader now. I was already leaning towards it, I'm guessing by the fact that I attacked, but in post combat doesn't really make a difference, but... So I mean, yeah, this isn't exactly great. <laughs> a 3 mana 1-1 one, one is not where we want it to be. At least we get to get a Gideon out next turn, it'll make it a 2-2, two, two. looks like we're playing Ozov Control. I stand corrected, uh, Ozov Auras. And I'd love to rip a 2 drop here so we could go Declaration into a creature. But we'll see. That's just another land. I think we just play Gideon and then make that. Oh, oh, actually, actually, this works out pretty well because we get to make the the knight and actually still attack because uh, we can tap and give it first strike. So I mean, he could just swing back with like he plays like an aura or something, and then that thing has life link. But I mean, it's not exactly like we can do anything to play around it. Judging by the fact he played that out, I'm not sure he's going to be running Languish. But then again, I mean, always okay. Looks like we're playing aggro, has time corrected. Holy shit, that's actually an amazing combo. Respect, I like that a lot. Uh, we are not racing here, but we need to kill that next turn and we need to keep Gideon around. So, yeah, I like that a lot. Always watching plus <laughs> Blood Curse Knight. I mean, it's, I still don't think it's a bit too janky, but hey, I guess I can't complain. Okay, so what are we doing this turn? Step one, make a knight. 
decoration stone and always watching if he has the board YP I mean fair play to him but the last like why is it two cards he's just played just told me I don't think he runs board wipes so uh, I mean we've seen what's it one two three four five six we've seen seven lands already this game I really wouldn't mind not seeing any more okay good I guess I could have attacked that probably would have been better I don't know I like to make a knight here I'm gonna keep this land in hand in case we draw like a tireless tracker and opponent's gone, so never mind. Uh, if we didn't have the removal for if we didn't have the decoration stone for that knight, we think we just lost. Luckily we did, and opponent might have bit off the grasp of darkness a bit too soon. I can't remember where he used it on now, but he killed something. <laughs> so let's jump into one more. Like I'd love to play all get I'd, I would love to play all the games, but the freeze things actually already happened on me. I think it was once or twice in the last interval since the last video, and it's 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 got to the point where I really don't know what's causing it, so it's just better not to risk it at all, which is a damn shame. Uh, I like and I did like that combo that always watching plus blood curse vampire, whoever it was. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other like decent enchantments we got in Shadows or Oath in Black. I mean, Oath of Gideon maybe, but it's an interesting conundrum. This guy's running like 63 cards or something. Uh, I'm gonna keep. I'm not on the play, but we do in theory. We can catch back up with Knight of the White Orchid. Is my it's my theory here. Like if we uh. Because we're not, I mean, we're not going to be able to play anything turn two, but we can catch back up. Is where I'm getting at. Alchemist file, interesting. If he keeps sending land drops anyway, who knows? Maybe rip a planes as well. I'm trying to think if he's like some sort of delirium deck, but you don't really see white blue delirium, so maybe it's just control. And unfortunately, we rip another untapped land. I'm not going to play out the, the, the Lieutenant before the other cards, I don't think, anyway. Nah, I'd rather have the, the, the board pump over anything else. So, please hit your land drop this turn, otherwise I'm going to be very upset, okay. You did, good. Shit, I, I just realised I can't actually get the value this turn anyway. Because I don't have double white. I needed to play out the, the Canopy Vista, I don't know why I didn't, I fucked that up. Oh shit. Uh shit. Fevered Visions. I'm actually pretty fine to see that in this deck. I mean, yeah, you play out the Tyler's Tracker, yeah. I know he's going to have removal for it, but we need to get a hand size under 7, so we might as well play the most expensive spells. Both are removal spells in hand. So, I mean, if he hits a land drop this turn, we can do it, or where we should have been able to do it last turn. I quite like, I wonder if this is like he's um, I don't see what white's doing in his deck yet, and it looks like he hasn't hit his land drop. God damn it. And discard, maybe he did hit and he's just uh, gonna try and like madness out a spell here. Fiery temper or something. I still think we can get under this, even though we have got a full grip so far. Uh, Just get my value from my clue just in case it comes up and I can maybe sacrifice it to get some sort of juice from it. So I mean I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna go with this, you know, just get my get my get my clues while I can. I mean my uh what's it called? Counters while I can. It's really weird like a twin bolt or something there, so while he can't, while he can't play a twin bolt, it's worth going for. Then, uh, brutal expulsion is unfortunate. Hey, at least uh, Tyler's truck is out of the range. I think that taps him out though. Yeah, it does. 
shouldn't really say much. I guess we just get to recast that and then our loot lieutenant's gonna get big. We're down to five cards in hand. If he plays a creature, we can stop on some of these removal spells. But I don't think we can actually get under it soon, unless, like I said, he starts playing creatures. I don't know, like I'd blow down a thing of the ice at this point. Uh, I don't think I'm playing this well at all. Okay, hey. I mean, that gets to kill a, yeah. But I mean, I'll blow, I'll blow a removal spell on that. Interesting deck across them, as I can't say I've ever seen this archetype before or even heard of it. So I'm just going to kind of go along with the ride. Uh, really appreciate if I stopped drawing lands at this point. <laughs> I feel like we're flooding out pretty bad. Yeah, he's going to stop blowing his Alchemist files now. I'm tempted if I want to sacrifice a clue. I know we want to get a hand size low, but we're going to be taking the damage anyway. I think I think I do sacrifice clues here. Because, I mean, if we draw creatures, then... If we draw creatures, then we can play them. And if we draw lands, then we couldn't play them anyway, and our hand's full of lands, so we couldn't get below the size anyway. So I think we lose nothing by cracking these clues. I'm really worried about like a Radiant Flames, although I guess we do have the Valley's Left Turn, which is under it now. Looks like we're playing some sort of Artifact slash Fever Divisions, I don't know what we're playing. But he's up, he's putting us under pressure, I'll tell you that. Well, that's actually pretty good for Decoration Stone. Get rid of them blockers if he tax in here, which he might do, he does not. This is good. This is really good here. I'm not sure if we have the mana to do everything we want, but we can go for it. Okay, so first things first, Declaration Storm, kill the 1-3s. We actually do have the mana for everything we want here. Without you. Minus 2, because Thopter's going to attack anyway, so might as well get the value where we can. Cloud does watch Kura. <laughs> He's almost in a position where he has to to chump. 6, 9, 12. He actually does have to chump. He has to chump with 1. It's interesting to see if he takes the, the Nissa off the board here. So yeah, he's only going to chump with 1, I guess. That makes sense. And we are not under the hand size yet, but we should be able to get under it next turn. Actually, he gets to just redirect it to Nissa if he wants. I'm, not, I'm still not sure that's what he wants to do. He does. Okay, I'm fine with that. Nissa already got me 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters, which isn't bad for 3 mana. I can even start digging with Just Watch Your Crew, but again, he's got a few divisions. So. And a stacked hand. I wonder what's in this hand. Because he, really, he, he really hasn't been like too proactive here. I guess we have had two pretty good value. Declaration stones. Hmm. Meteor. Okay, we have we are facing some spice here, and it's actually working out for him. Although he's actually no, he's not facing lethal because of the alchemist file. Uh, but he's he's definitely on the back foot. I mean. This turn, hopefully, he, it means he can't actually deal us damage if we draw something we can actually play, i.e. Or anything other than land. That's good. Uh, so we're not going to get shocked this turn. We're not going to get shocked this turn. We are underneath the fever divisions. 
be attacking for six, he's going to have to jump block. He has no board, we can give our kitty an indestructible. We have a clue which we can sack, even if he does wipe the board, Uden World Mysteries gives us a bunch of fodder. We're in a good position here, I think. Bar life gain. If he plays a Glen Vala here, I'll be sad. But to be honest, I mean, he's, he's played a meteorite, so anything's possible. He, has actually, he actually hasn't played a white spell yet, so... He's gotta have something in there. Maybe his hand's just stuck for the Gideon's reprisal. Can't say I was expecting that. Can I do anything? I cannot. At least we'll get a clue out of it. <laughs> Might actually just double sack the clue here, make two one ones. Depends what he does. Just more, more threats on the field. I mean, we're on 12 life, we're not exactly in danger of being killed. So I think we actually do make these 1-1s one here just because he's done that. He doesn't have the mana to blow up our... To blow up our Gideon. With the, uh, the sacrificing an artifact. If he draws it, okay, he's actually doing that. Uh, I'll, happily, I'll happily do this instead. I forgot he had the meteorite, I forgot the meteorite tapped on mana. <laughs> uh, yeah. Leaf game, so... That was, that was an interesting one. Do you know, I don't think I've played any game today well, but we managed to come out with a couple wins, which is decent. So yeah, hopefully the audio is working on this one. Apologies, like I said, if I've been a bit frustrated or salty, I guess, but hey. These are the way we roll, so... All I've got to say is... Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you later.